My name is Alan Abbey. I'm the media director of the Shalom Hartman Institute, which is a research center and think tank in Jerusalem, Israel. The media in Israel are very different from the media of America, and the media of America grow out of the history of the United States, the First Amendment, the Constitution, uh, civil rights, and uh, legal protections for the press. Um, the history of Israel is necessary because Israeli media grew out of a very different history, a history of censorship, a history of political journalism, and a history of conflict. And so I felt to explain and understand Israeli media, um, some real exploration of the history of Israel even before Israel was a state was necessary. I got an undergraduate degree in political science and a master's in journalism. I wanted to have a knowledge of things outside of journalism before I became a journalist. And I worked in US paper, newspapers in the United States for the better part of 20 years and then moved to Israel in my middle age at 45 um, on, I won't say on a lark, but because um, my wife and I were looking for a big change in our lives and we wanted to find a way to raise our children in a different place. And uh, we wanted a little bit of adventure, I guess. And so obviously I had to reinvent myself. I'd had no friends or contacts in Israeli media, but I did have experience in journalism and I got to Israel at a time when the advent of the internet and the growth of English as an international language made it easier for an English-speaking journalist to uh, get employment, and that's what I did. I worked primarily in English language media in Israel until I went to my current position um, at a research center. Well, it had a big impact on me, and it had a big impact on the way we did our job. Because as I said, we missed probably the biggest story of that year, and if not the previous years, uh, five or ten years before that, um, because we didn't yet understand the true nature of the internet, which is you have to be on, on and in and online and operative 24-7. We felt that you could take the day off, a day of rest, right? The traditional Jewish day of rest was something, and it's still a very valuable thing to do, but in terms of the media, you have to be in the game all the time because you, news never stops, particularly in Israel, but everywhere these days. And People want content instantly. They want to know instantly what happened. We weren't there for that. And that profoundly changed the way we did our jobs. We changed our scheduling. And I don't think you'll find a major news organization in Israel, certainly, or anywhere these days with a, with a website that isn't staffed 24-7 in some fashion. The army in Israel is a really central feature of the entire society. When it was founded, when the state of Israel was founded, and the army was founded by the founder of the nation, David Ben-Gurion, essentially the George Washington of Israel, he wanted it to play a major role in education and absorption of immigrants. And that meant taking people from many parts of the world. And they uh, did a lot more than an army usually does, which is carry guns and patrol the borders or, or uh, fight off enemies. And so um, there was, the army had a radio station and it wanted to reach its own uh, uh, soldiers. And so they created a magazine and a radio station and they needed therefore journalists to staff it. So they created uh, a journalism course and they needed uh, journalists. So they took certain young 18 year olds. These, remember these are kids right out of high school, not university students and gave them a very short training course and then threw them into the fray with microphones and cameras and notebooks to cover the news. And it was a very, it wasn't an in-depth program, so it lacked a lot. And that's one of the challenges Israeli journalism has had is that there isn't a lot of education and theory and history and context taught. And in fact, the reason I think I did pretty well in my career and the things I learned at the university were especially in the graduate program, a chance to think about journalism and not just do journalism. And in the army, the Israeli army, they don't really think about it, they just get the basic skills. And that leads to limited uh, context and, and uh, less understanding of what they, what, not just what they're doing, but what it means and how it affects people. And I learned that, and now there are new programs and there's more uh, professional education, but for decades, that's all Israeli journalists knew is what they learned in the army. The Israeli media environment is more professional. 
it's more competitive. There are more media outlets. Um, uh, there is a concentration of ownership of the major media, a topic I didn't have time to get into in great detail. But at the same time, in the internet has permitted the st startups, um, blogs, um, uh, online operations, podcasts, Facebook posts, and people, more people are in the game. There are more voices, so there's been greater diversity of voices from the left and the right um, in Israeli media, which I think is a very good thing. And so, in fact, it's better now than it has been. It's more professional and it's more diverse. And I think those are both, both of those are good things. The same way that the political realm in Israel is very freewheeling, so are the media, and they take each other on. And there are a couple of ongoing scandals of significant importance involving our Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, and the media. So, for example, before the, the last election in Israel was called because of a proposal in the parliament to force um, a free newspaper to be paid. That is, there was, they were going to make it illegal against the law. They were going to make it against the law to, to give away a newspaper for free because it was conceived to be unfair competition and because that particular paper was supportive of the prime minister and a fight over whether that newspaper should allowed, be allowed to distribute itself for free essentially caused the collapse of a previous government. And at the same time, on the other side of this equation, the same prime minister was conspiring with the competition to this free newspaper, that other paper I referenced, Yidiot Acharnot, what was then the biggest paper in Israel, to offer support, to offer to take his support away from this free newspaper, which was supporting him, in exchange for good coverage from this paper, which was critical of him. And both of these are being investigated by uh, prosecutors in Israel. So there's, it's, I know it's kind of detailed and complex, but the fact is that the media are the story sometimes in Israel, more so even than in the United States. And I'm not ta talking with claims of fake news, I'm talking of actual actionable legal scandals involving newspaper organizations and media organizations. The worst editor I ever had at an American newspaper was the one who told me, here's the story, now go out and prove it. And I, I resisted that and I uh, urge all journalists to resist that as well. There's something's going on. You don't know what it is. And a good editor says, something's going on, figure it out, find it out. And, and do the research and then come back and tell me what the story is. Because you don't know where you'll end up once you start reporting a story. And my point about in personal, individual, intellectual honesty is that if, especially in this day and age where people are more aware of their own beliefs, shall we call them biases or deeply held values, um, there are some times when you'll run across something that contradicts this value of yours, this belief of yours, and a true journalist will accept that sometimes he or she is, not, is wrong. And if you cannot do that and cannot accept that the direction you thought the story would go is not where the facts and the trail leads you to it, then you're really not being intellectually honest with yourself and therefore the re readers or viewers you will have. And a good journalist will find a way to um, get at the truth, even if it ends up contradicting something they walked in the door with. My time at the University of Oregon journalism program was only was brief, only two years, but it gave me an underpinning, an understanding of journalism that I use to this very day. Values of ethics, the values of thoroughness, the values of honesty and accuracy, and the uh, passion for which they taught journalism was echoed in my passion for journalism as a something as a calling akin to the priesthood or being a rabbi or an imam, somebody who really believes in something. It's not just a job. If you want a job, get a, become a lawyer or a doctor or an engineer and, and make your money. That's fine. And I'm not saying journalists should take a vow of poverty. But if that's what you want to do, then journalism isn't for you. And I'm Journalism is, for, is a field for people who believe in the value of 
openness and honesty and facts and let people decide for themselves what to do with them. And those are values I picked up at the J School here that I truly apply to this very day. And in my own research in ethics, I think back on the courses and the conversations I had with professors here on those very deep values and how they play themselves out in the modern world. And they're, the specifics change, but the values are timeless. <laughs>